The Square Ball Podcast. Hello, welcome to the show. It's brought to you with Levi Solicitors. That 10% discount can be yours at levisolicitors.co.uk forward slash the square ball. Three of us in today, Dan Moylan here hosting things with Michael Normanton and Rob Conlon as well completing our trio tsb plus we give you extra podcasts we give you our, our entire back catalogue of mags since 2009 digital versions don't we that's dead good daily email um dedicated podcast feeds ad free loads of stuff won't list all the benefits here the squareball.net forward slash plus have a look at that part one of the show then is where we dive into the weekly news and the window is shut it's slammed shut you know that we know that we've not properly broken it all down have we um, so should we have a quick mention of it now we are going to do an extra ball actually aren't we for, for members just where we kind of do it at a bit more length because I think it'll probably be too much just for here yeah and we can talk a bit about you know some of the good aspects of it as well Tyler Adams Brendan Aronson these are nice things I'm glad mm. we've got them um, a week ago not so much it wasn't going well was it we were, we were into record we thought we were signing Cody Gakpo then we thought we were signing Bamba Dieng Brad Rizani thought we were signing Bamba Dieng. <laughs> Brad Rizani definitely. I mean, he thought we did, but surely he wouldn't have tweeted anything to that. Uh, no, that would that would be almost unprofessional and look a bit sloppy, wouldn't it? It'd be really jumping the gun, wouldn't it? Before yeah. before he's in the country, before he's done a medical, all these things that could go wrong with a transfer, particularly of someone like Dieng, who may or may not get on a plane and may or may not pass a medical. But funny, in- funny though, because he's turned down Antwerp, didn't he? Who, who did? Um, Dieng ended up getting farmed out so I thought I think he was offered the opportunity of Antwerp because their window is slightly later than ours didn't fancy it wasn't he injured? <laughs> I don't know yeah, they're just trying, trying their very very best I think because if someone's already failed a medical they're like do you want this guy? they would be like what about the the old leg medical? he, <laughs> like, he can run right? <laughs> I know he's, he's fine they were being being too cautious about it um, I'm just uh, going to say the important stuff is that he's known as Godi Hakpo 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 that's how you pronounce it properly in, in, huh. in Dutch I think um, it's good I can, and apologies to the person who has sent that to us but I've lost where it is now I don't know if it's a tweet or an email or what but um, wanted to correct my I mean, awful touch. we're not going to have to say it very often other than to confirm when he signs for someone else <laughs> in January <laughs> yeah um, what we do did get and what we do know is that uh, Willy Nyoto Nyonto I keep saying Noto it's because it's the like, Hey Moto you know the old adverts mm. I got that stuck in my head Nyonto uh, a sign from from Zurich he's a lovely young lad isn't he Jesse didn't know much about him he didn't. He really didn't seem to know know anything, did he? When he turned up, and there was that little clip of him going, "He speaks good English." Uh, he speaks English. Fantastic. What's your name again? Sorry, sir. <laughs> what position? What position do you play? Okay, not not left back. No, and not not really. A st- so what, why are you here again? You seem quite little. For, you seem quite little for a target man as well. That I was kind of hoping for. Jesse didn't know if it was going to be Hakpo, or it could have been Dieng, could have been Ben Brereton Diaz, could have been Kalechi <laughs> Nacho. Who else was there? Joel Puro at Swansea. Yeah, the, yeah the Swansea guy. I mean, I like the, I like the Nacho one because they said he was unattainable, which might be because he was playing for Leicester at the time, which <laughs> could have caused a slight problem. Oh yeah, no, I thought about that. That's true. Which, yeah. Uh, yeah, so it was just a normal deadline day in Leeds, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah, I mean. We're led uh, to believe. Well, let's believe that um, uh, the Ellen Road Insider. We have an insider, obviously. Uh, oh, do we? I may. I think so. Okay. Said that um, Jesse demanded just to bring me a warm body. Yes. Yeah. That's that's what happened. But, Sorry, not, but not Dan James. But not Dan James. What were you going to say, Michael? Sorry. Uh, from the sounds of it, we were going to sign um, Ngonto. And if I said that right, <laughs> Nonto. It's, it's Nyonto. Nonto. Nonto. Him. We were going to sign him. I think you've typed it wrong on the sheet, so it's confusing. Okay, brain. that's probably right. Yeah, um, <laughs> <laughs> I think I just read. I read my own my own writing and thought that's not right, is it? Um, it sounds like we were going to sign him anyway. And in an you absolute, sound like Je- you sound like Jesse when he first walked in. In an absolute <laughs> panic, we've gone. Oh, we fucking need someone, don't we? Christ, yeah. we've otherwise we're going to actually just be a body down here. So we've got him. Uh, he hasn't been to Ellen Road yet, but his mum and dad have, which I really like. I mean, I like that, you know, the, the club have taken some pelters this week, but I will say it's nice the way that they kind of try to take this. I guess it's almost like a holistic approach to bringing a young lad because he is, he is only a baby, as Jesse mm. said, 18 years old. And they brought his mum and dad in and said, Look, you're going to love it here. Look at this. I mean, you say that, but they have basically called him up at what, 10 pm on a deadline day and gone, Right, you're 18. You're moving from Switzerland to Leeds. <laughs> uh, hope that's okay. Uh, I know you didn't have any plans to do this. You've not moved any of this stuff, but. Crack on, mate. Yeah, well, uh, yeah moving in January, right? No. No, now. January, <laughs> August, <laughs> September. But I will say, we've got rid of Dan James, and we've brought in someone even more adorable. Mm. Isn't he cute? Did you see his interview? He's a lo- his, he is a lovely young man, isn't he? With his braces on. Yep. 
and he's got little tiny like childlike ears and he's got really small ears yeah, bless him yeah, yeah. someone pointed that out to me it's really strange I can't unsee it now he's still growing maybe he'll grow your ears do keep growing as you get older don't they that's true they never stop do they ears Good. and nose keep growing so Look at Peter Reed. yes <laughs> so maybe he'll um his ears will grow into his head. I'm genuinely, something. genuinely, I know, I can. I feel a bit sorry for him in all, all the shakedown of this because everyone's basically was like, get us a sign in for deadline day, especially if you're letting one leave. Not that sign in. We wanted a different, more glamorous and expensive sign in. It doesn't help that, like a week or two before, Jesse Marsh had talked about him and said, yeah, he's, he's someone we're definitely interested in, but he's not ready for the Premier League. Mm. And, and all of a sudden, he's a Dan James replacement, someone who has played in the Premier League for. Three years now. Well, this is his th- this is his third year, isn't it? Something like that. So, it's not a great look to have uh, to have said oh, he's not really good enough. Oh yes, he is. Sorry, <laughs> we we made a mistake when we said that. We were talking about someone else when we were saying that. Jan Dames. He wasn't ready. Uh, he is ready. It turns out. Always was. Always was. Um, and will be a fine addition. The Dan James stuff. I mean, I'm not. I still struggle to be that bothered about him leaving. <laughs> Which is maybe unfair. I, I, it's not less. About, it's less about him and his abilities because you you can see there are technical limitations to his game, can't you? He's, mm. He is a speed merchant, um, and you know it, it's like shades of Darren Huckaby in in the days mm. of yore. But he always struck me that Huckaby could finish a bit as well. Yeah, he reminds me a little bit of when Tyler Roberts left. In that I was kind of, in some ways, I'm glad to see him leaving so we can see someone else from the bench. Right. Just because it's always Dan James and he never does anything. The, yeah. But he set up a goal against Chelsea. I mean, we have a very no, small did, sample suppose, size, didn't he? Yeah. On that, I do sort of think, you know, the club makes such a big noise about these young players we're signing, and with some of them, I think, well, he does need to play at some point if, mm. if we are going to see whether he's good enough or not. So from that All point right, of Angus. view, <laughs> <laughs> so from that point of view, I think okay, but I do, I do, I just feel sorry for Dan James, old man Dan James, clogging up the pathway. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that's the thing, like, when when are we going to use these young players? Mm. Like, we might as well give them a few games. But yeah, for Dan James on a personal level, and it does come back to the thing of. Just ringing up a eighteen-year-old lad and making him move across Europe mm. on deadline day, like just sending Dan James, who moved to Leeds last year, has had a kid, and now it's like, oh no, you're gonna have to bugger off to London, mate. Sorry, it, do- it doesn't paint the picture of a well-executed transfer policy, does it? I think that's where the, the grief has, has come from. And uh, Dan James on a one of our higher earners as well, by the sounds of it, yeah. which is, I suppose, that's why it does look bad for the club as well, because actually you can look at the last day of transfer business and go, oh, so you've, well, you're better off from this essentially because I don't know how much we're paying him but it will not be as much as Dan James will it so it feels like they've it feels like they've made a little cost save a sneaky cost saving on the last day of the transfer window which is not what anyone was really hoping for and particularly in a day that started with us signing Cody Gakpo for <laughs> 40 million pounds has ended with us probably saving about 50 grand a week on wages mm, yeah messaging it all got away from them didn't it and mm. uh, Jesse probably contributed to that but we, we've said all this and um, we will expand I think on the on the transfer stuff uh, when we do the um, the transfer window they can have a, the ball can have a more extended kicking <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in, a, in an episode of the extra ball but I mean it is that it's down to the messaging as much as anything else isn't yeah. it if it, you, if it was very to... very badly executed was the final day yeah was considering it? how well planned it was at the start and mm. again I guess we're, we're treading on the same territory that we're going to do on that show at the start you went alright fine if we've accepted lower fees for um, Rafinha and Phillips which by the way do look fairly poxy now against some of the other fees that have happened in the window if you've accepted those fees to do business early fine Angus Kinnear sat here and explained as well with inflation as it is sometimes better to have the money now um, because in another year's time 10 million quid might only be worth the equivalent of 9 million quid and so on and so forth mm-hmm. fair enough right that that makes sense even if we don't agree with all aspects of it but that end was just fucking shambolic wasn't it absolutely shambolic especially coming what, 48 hours after Kinnear's programme notes, which again has been mm-hmm. over plenty of times. But part of me, as we were saying earlier, is uh, I was almost pleased when Rodrigo got injured because it just showed up what absolute bollocks all that was mm-hmm. and how yeah. the obvious things that we could see were indeed as obvious as we could see. And it's not us being stupid or impatient, but we thought... Or, we was... or behaving in a manner that's perplexed, for example. Yes. <laughs> when you see a forward line of proven internationals who are incredibly injury prone and 20 minutes later one gets injury in, injured and we've still only got one left back at the club and he's injured as well so although we've got another proven international at number nine now in, <laughs> yes. in, we in have a, i was gonna we have a proven international left back don't we now well we do ah, don't we? Yes, pascal course. the big sad pirate has uh, has got his call up um but while playing left back therefore so we, we, is a left back yeah well, we know that um he could have 
uh, gone for any of the Benelux countries. Uh, or is it Indonesia, his heritage mm-hmm. as well? Yeah, so there's plenty of options there. Obviously, you're going to go to one of the European ones because he's predominantly from there, especially if they've been sniffing around him and for a while know, now. A chance of playing actually at World Cups and yeah, stuff. Yeah, exa- exactly. Yeah, yeah, it makes sense, doesn't it? Um, and he's gone for one of the three Benelux countries. Is it Bet or Ne or Lux? He's gone for Ne. That's the question. Come for the Netherlands. The Netherlands, yeah. But good. Deserves it, I think. We just need to tell him to not listen to anything Louis van Gaal says after he uh, yes. talks Gakpo part of moving to Leeds. He obviously doesn't know what he's talking about. No. Pas- or indeed, Pascal should talk him into it. Uh, or indeed anything that uh, Diego Llorente says as well. <laughs> just ignore. Just focus on yourself. If you do, you. <laughs> yeah. You, you seem to be doing okay. <laughs> he hasn't done very well though at left back, I think. he's He's done better at left back than... Furpo did yeah. <laughs> truthfully um, he, as much as I think I, I think having a proper left back might give us a better shape I think he's he's done really well there so well done big pirate uh, long might continue and so on and so forth yeah is he a big sad pirate or just a big pirate um, he's, he's just a big I don't think sad's the right word for him he's very understated he seems quite shy doesn't he he's a big handsome pirate isn't he he's very handsome he doesn't get talked about enough how handsome he is mm. I don't I, maybe he's just my personal taste, but I think he's very, I think he's a very nice looking boy. Good. I think if it's a if we have a centre back pairing of him and Robin Cock, they should just we should automatically qualify for Europe for being <laughs> so handsome. I would say so. He does. Uh, Robin Cock is the is the World War One pilot Lothario, isn't he? Mm. He's got that kind of vibe about him. Most handsome pairing since Butler and Gregan. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Leeds women, another win. Good. Yes. Beat Middlesbrough two 0 with Johnny Housen in attendance. I thought you were going to say he was playing then for a second. No, no. But his daughter was mascot for Middlesbrough. Oh, bless. So he was uh, he was seen there. But he was cheering on Leeds, I heard. He, I will have been more, he? Yeah, yeah. He knows. He knows, really. Who scored? Tell me. Laura Bartup. Mm-hmm. Won and scored a penalty. Hot shot Bartup. Yeah, she's good. Good player. Um, and then Sarah Danby uh, made it two in the second half. And we are now second in the league. Just behind Barnsley. They seem good, though. Goals four, ten. Goals against one. Mm. And they've won four out of four, but we've won three out of four, lost only one. Yeah, is yeah. it one? It's only one team that goes up, is it? Yeah, that's the, the problem with this league. It's it sounds kind like of, a um, fix, doesn't it? it yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they've seen who's second, then no leads. We're not letting them up. Yeah, yeah. they're bound in York and in New- Newcastle. Their owners very graciously allowing the women to play football. Yes, very good. That very is good of them. them. Very good of them to allow that, yeah, at least in this country. Uh, but yeah, this is this is the northern um, division, isn't it? Uh, so you have got like at the bottom of the league, you've got Mersey Rail. So I presume they came up, did they, last time? Up on the rails? Y- yes. Um, they've lost four out of four, conceding 15 goals on the way. So you can see the range of like quality, can't you, in there between like you know Barnsley and uh, and Mersey Rail. Interesting. I want to see what Mer- what do they, outfit do they play in. Is it trains? Is it like Thomas <laughs> the Tank Engine? <laughs> Looks like a fairly standard uh, red and white stripe. Right. Disappointingly. It's quite a nice kit, actually. Nike one looks a bit like uh, Atletico Madrid. Okay. Have you seen, have you seen Atletico's kit? Um, sorry, Atletico, their kit. Mm, it's it's strong, probably it's wavy, wavy stripes. Oh, I don't like a wavy stripe. It's the it's the lowest selling home kit in their history or something. Or sales have plummeted like sixty percent. Not surprised. I hate it when they go wavy stripe. Is yeah. the uh, is the owner's son designed it or something? <laughs> <laughs> that would be stupid. <laughs> couldn't, couldn't possibly comment um, on that, Rob. Twenty ones. What's happened? Now, since we last spoke. Pathetic. We've signed a player from. <laughs> <laughs> Have we? Yeah, well, possibly, yes. So uh, we may get to see our new signing on Friday night because uh, we play away at West Brom. Okay. And I guess there's a chance, with it being a Friday night and game not till the Monday, I guess it maybe gives a chance for players to have a bit of a game in this and then if you want to give someone half an hour but then play them in the first team. Poor Matteo Joseph. Such a promising start to the season. Mm. He's been training with the first team, hasn't he? He's been spotted. Mm, he, he deserves it he's, he's played really well at the start of the season I've actually been more impressed with Joseph than I have Sonny Perkins I know he's been mm. getting a bit more of the hype being the, the new boy but I think Joseph has been really good it'll be interesting again to see who plays left back after <laughs> Alfie McCallumont had a little go there the other week and scored a fine goal albeit it was at fault for the opposition's goal or, I mean, uh, maybe this is a chance to get all the lesser, lesser involved boys get, get them all the game who are you thinking? Don't know whoever's lesser involved. It was it was Joe Donahue, by the way, who um, tweeted to say that Matteo Joseph had been spotted training with the first team. He scored five goals so far, hasn't he? Mm. But we're in that classic situation of depleting the um, the twenty ones in order to supplement the first team, aren't we? Again, I mean, mm. they've got loads of strikers, so yeah, it's true. Yes, um, so Chris, just, Chris Class and left back. Yeah, give him a go. <laughs> I'm just looking at um, at the fixtures on Friday. It's Burnley, Norwich. He's on telly. Dear God. So there's no um, there's no Premier League game. So hopefully we'll be able to watch the West Brom 
21s game. Yes. Obviously, there's no blackout because when the Premier League's on, they can't show the 21s, can they? Just, just stupid. Yeah. Are they? Are they so? Do they have so little confidence in the Premier League product <laughs> that they think Leeds against West Brom under 21s is going to drag such a big TV audience away? Might, might do. Stupid bloody rules. Um, so yeah, well, uh, would you play Nonto? Yes, at left back. Oh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, there's any chance of Firpo getting a game actually, because we're mm. coming up to the time that Jesse said Firpo would be injured for and there's been talk of him training and things like that and you know an actual just to see an actual left back would be a real novelty mm-hmm. this season because we've not had it yet so we, maybe we'll soon have an appearance <laughs> potentially I guess Ailing and Cooper might make a bit of an appearance mm-hmm. as well if they want to just give him a, a little a little practice ahead of Monday get some minutes in your legs lads yeah just just give him half an hour just to see how they look and then and then take him off and you know keep him safe for the bench or get him injured <laughs> which is what seems to happen in a very Leedsy way but like yeah he's just going to complete his comeback just needs to play oh never mind uh, but we'll see we'll see there you go part one done and dusted then we will preview Forest in part two and we're going to do the week's heroes and villains as well in part three so look out for those in your YouTube feed in due course it'll be on the way in a bit the Square Ball Podcast 